What I remember most about my time at the university would be the people. People that you spend a lot of time with. I was not a social butterfly, so there are not many of them. But these are the people that you spend time with living the life of an undergraduate, going through that cycle of stress and relief, if you like. Stress preparing for papers, stress preparing for exams, relief when you get it done, relief when you realise you didn't flunk, you know. And it was nice to have people who were with you. And one of the fondest memories I have is of a friend, uh, Albert, who was a fellow Rafflesian. He was a schoolmate and we did history together for three years. And this picture in my head is always of Albert and myself at the Central Library, wrapping up the papers at the very last minute, whizzing across the quad, you know, delivering the paper under the door of the tutor or lecturer in question, and then rewarding ourselves with a drink. I think it was the, across the road was the Annex Canteen, where we would then grab a drink, you know, with a mixture of relief and some satisfaction. So that, those were the fondest memories of the memories that have stuck with me, people were people. But there's also one thing that I was thinking of this question and when I reflected on it, I realised that it was also a time of transition for the university. I was there from 1977 to 1981. I signed up with the University of Singapore. I left with the National University of Singapore and we were part of this thing called the Joint Campus Scheme. Uh, Nanyang University students in the Arts and Social Sciences faculty came and joined us in our lectures, our tutorials and set for the same time press exams. So for people like Albert and I, I think it was just a name change as an oddity. But for some of my friends, and I remember one of them very clearly, they had a hard time with the language demands. It's not an issue of mental competency, it was just the demands of language in an exam situation. And he left after uh, two years, and that was sad. Because so when I look back at that, and I reflect on that time, that time was a time of transition and it had casualties, uh, my friend being one of them. Uh, yeah. Um, I think there are many gifts that you take with you after university that you only realise after university. Uh, at one level, of course, it's explicit learning. You, you, from whether it's history or other subjects that you take, you take with you explicit knowledge. You pick up skills, analytical skills, and these become part of the toolkit, part of the canvas, the intellectual canvas that you carry with you to the rest of your life, working life included. You know, and it's a canvas that grows as you grow, it's because I always believe that you learn as you grow, you grow as you learn. But the university period was a very intense and compressed period of learning and so it populated that canvas more than any other time of my life huh? and it was, that was really valuable. The other part of it, of course, is specific to English literature. I, I know that I, if you like, cultivated a certain awareness of the possibilities of language, its different texture, dimensions, written language, uh, spoken language, but more written. And that sensibility is a little bit more organically cultivated. You didn't know it when you were having it, but in years to come, you look at it and you realise that this is part of that training, that part of the exposure that you have in university when you read something or when you write something. Uh, the other part of university life that I'd like to share is that it was also a time of life. It was not just a time of learning, it was a time of life. And so in that space and time, you meet people that you, perhaps you would not have otherwise met. And a particular group of people that I was grateful to have become friends with were my mentors. I had lecturers, tutors who were mentors who became friends, lifelong friends. One of them was Dr. Ban Kachun. He was my uh, academic advisor in my final uh, honours year. Um, he was very stern, very intimidating in the first year, you know, quite scary. But by the third, fourth year, he was a man that you got to know as a friend and someone whom I enjoy sparring with, you know. He, I felt that, you know, while I, I respected his views and his judgments, I could hold my own. And I think that's a measure of growth and maturity. Uh, the other person, of course, was I remember and continue to keep in touch with very fondly is Professor Edwin Tambu. He was my very first tutor in my very first tutorial in English. He took us through Othello. He then left and was elevated to become uh, Dean of the Arts and Social Sciences Faculty. We had him again in our fourth year when he curated the uh, Commonwealth Literature Program. I think specifically he took the segment on African writers. And so Prof Tambu remained a friend and I, uh, and I, I go on road trips with him you know, from time to time, every two, three years. Uh, and uh, I look forward to doing so after the COVID restrictions have been lifted. Uh, Prof uh, remained a friend up to today. He has been helping us also in some of the work I do uh, in national parks.
specific to myself, you know, I was a very poor student in school. Uh, and so for, the, for whatever lack of conscientiousness that I had in school, I made up for it at university. So I found the university experience as a learning experience was stimulating, you know, to be a, a time of, uh, of learning and I was very serious at it. And so for me, that intense period of learning was very enjoyable, very, if you like, uh, something that grew uh, a passion in you to, 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 to continue to pursue even after you've left the university and, and that was good. I enjoyed my university years more than I enjoyed my school years. And so if you have any advice to anyone is I hope people will find that at the university uh, the programs are such that you have space to grow, space to explore and I hope that they take the opportunity to do that fully while they are there. You know?